What's going on everyone? All of the controversy surrounding Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets has came to an head, right? And it looks like Kyrie Irving may be spending his last times uh, with the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, he is currently serving a suspension over what he posted over on Twitter. I have given my thoughts and opinions on numerous occasions. Uh, I will link some videos down in the description below if you want to hear my thoughts on how I feel about this. I am going to give you some of it uh, in this video in a moment. Uh, but the reason I wanted to bring this up and talk about it is we got the information now of what the Brooklyn Nets want from Kyrie Irving in order to return. Kyrie Irving is serving a minimum of five game suspension and he has to meet several requirements that the Brooklyn Nets deem uh, would make him a fit player in order for him to come uh, rejoin the team in Brooklyn. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets released a statement saying that Kyrie Irving is unfit, doesn't belong in the organization, but now they have these new things that they that Kyrie Irving can do uh, if he wants to come back. And to me, I think it sounds ridiculous. But here it is, and you tell me what you think down in the comments. So first off, for Irving to return, he must meet with the media and issue a verbal apology that clearly states he's sorry for sharing the film and understand the film is harmful and untrue. Next up, he must also share the apology on his social media accounts. Irving initially issued an apology on Instagram hours after his suspension. So what this sounds like to me is that the Brooklyn Nets want him to apologize the way that they want him to apologize. That they don't want an apology from Kyrie Irving. They want to write an apology for him, and then he relays that apology. Because he already issued an apology. So why do they want another apology that he shares with the media, and then, on top of that, then share that apology again on social media? You know, he already gave his apology. I, look, at some point, he's going to have to have some sort of, you know, press conference or something like that. And he's going to have to answer questions. It's just, he's going to have to, if, in any team. Whether he plays on Brooklyn, goes to the Lakers, goes somewhere else, whatever. At some point, he's going to have to address the media and have that discussion. But are, are we trying to get him to apologize? Or are we trying to get him to submit to what you want him to do? Because that's what this sounds like to me. But let's continue. Uh, in addition, he must follow and complete sensitivity trainings determined by the team. Again, this is a team issue. This isn't a Kyrie. They 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 want to they want him to do what they want him to do uh, by the team while also meeting with Jewish leaders in the Brooklyn community. And finally, if he meets the numerous requirements to the net satisfaction, he must meet with ownership and demonstrate this type of behavior will not occur again this season. The last of Irving's four-year deal he has signed with the Nets. So they, they want him to say that basically to the ownership that he's not going to give any type of behavior that the organization doesn't seem fit. What is that? His belief system? His thoughts? Like, look, does Kyrie say some off-the-wall stuff sometimes? Sure. Does Kyrie, you know, have some beliefs that, you know, maybe other people don't agree with? Sure. But that's why we live in America. That's why we live in this world. I'm sure I have some beliefs and thoughts and opinions and things like that that many of you don't agree with and vice versa. I'm sure that's why we live in a society that allows us to express that freely. And you're trying to basically take this isn't about the book. This is this is becoming something else. This is becoming a lot more than just Kyrie Irving messed up and apologized. He apologized. Move on. He's done. He said he was sorry. He did a thing. If you want him to apologize to the media, fine. Apologize to the media. I can understand that. Whether he admits, agrees to it or not, or he uh, you know, believes his apology or not, whatever. You want him to do it. If he's willing to do it, fine. Let him do it. But now, it just this seems to me like the Brooklyn Nets want him to do what they want him to do and basically show, ha, look. Look what I did. I submitted this man. This guy is so outrageous and over the top. What did he do? The guy posted something with zero context and the entire media just ran with it, including the Brooklyn Nets. Like, you know, was it what he did right? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know the book. I don't know the I don't know the movie. So I can't speak either way on the context of that information. 
right? But even if he did, even if it was something that he absolutely shouldn't have posted and it was bad and it was naughty and he deserves a spanking, okay, well, apologize and move on. How did it go from him posting something? My issue isn't that he posted something and he was wrong, okay? If he was, that's fine. Okay, we all mess up. We all make mistakes. We all do things that we shouldn't have done or that, you know, we we inadvertently did. We've all hurt people's feelings. We've all done stuff that maybe looked bad. None of us are perfect, right? And that's fine. But this became something else. This became you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're this. And it was like there was no contact. Nobody gave him an opportunity to ask what happened when he had his first press conference the first question was you know oh why did you why did you support anti-semitic or you know anti-semitism are you anti-semitic and you know what why are you uh you know promoting alex jones and sandy hook and all this stuff like where did you like what how did you grasp at that straw for nothing like what Real reporting and real journalism would have been, because we no longer live in a society with real reporting and real journalism. We just don't. And what that is, what that would have been is, hey, Kyrie Irving, you posted a image that is considered by many anti-Semitic, but you didn't give any clarification. Could you please clarify your stance on that, you know, that post? And then Kyrie would have had an opportunity to relay that information. And then you ask the follow-up question according to what his response is. It never happened. They immediately started just labeling him a bad man and he's bad and he's evil and immediately started going after him. I mean, it's what Kyrie said in his thing. Like Kyrie literally said in his apology that he that everybody immediately called him, you know, a bigot and said he was anti-Semitic. So it was hard for him to give a proper response. I don't blame him. Most people's responses when you begin to attack them is fight or flight. You either fight and lash out or you run and hide. And Kyrie decided to fight back against his people and say stuff. And did he make things worse? Sure. He probably did. He probably should have just said, hey, look, I posted it. My bad. Moved on. But he did it. And nonetheless, that doesn't give you the right to try to destroy somebody when you don't have the context. If I don't have a context of something, I'm not going to assume what the context is. You know, Kyrie relayed that in the interview. He relayed that, no, I don't believe in everything that's in it. There was a lot of false stuff. There was a lot of fake stuff in it. But there was some stuff that I actually do believe in and I wanted to educate myself in that matter. Like, what? Like, why does that matter? It's a, it's a public domain item you can go on amazon and purchase that you can go watch that it's not like this was some radicalist style film that he had to go you know hike some canyon to to get to the top of this hill and some you know guy hands him this tape and goes you have been bestowed with this tape like that's not what this was this was something this was something that you right now could go on amazon and look and last little thing, because uh, I for- completely forgot that before my rant, uh, Shams also shared uh, that uh, one of the actions uh, that Irving has to complete is a $500,000 donation to anti-hate causes, which he's already tried to do, and they rejected it. How was that his fault, right? It's just, it's so n- uh, mind-numbing what this has turned into and what this has become. You know, people make mistakes. People say stupid shit. People do things and not every single thing that we and mistake that we make needs to be amplified. I understand he's somebody in a public eye, public image, gets paid millions of dollars, all of that stuff, but he's not a robot. He's still a human. Kyrie has said enough stuff in his life to point to and just cause some sort of drama, you know, whether it was warranted or not, he does, you know, but this This is something that just became beyond this. This was media-driven just destruction is what this was. 
This was amplified in every single way. You know, go watch the Nick Friedle interview. That was not journalism. There's one thing to push the boundaries and try to, you know, kind of test the person you are interviewing. It's another thing to just immediately start throwing out accusations. And you're a reporter. Who cares what the people on the internet say? They have every right to say and believe and think whatever they want. But journalists and media are supposed to be held to a higher standard. That's why they're in the position that they are in. That's why they are talking about and you know putting out what is supposed to be put out. And yet, they're not being held accountable in this situation. It, it just seems like this all was spearheaded by the media, and then the rest of the media was like, oh, here's our new headline, let's just continue to jump on it. But what about all the other things? You know, there are people that have literally like, had physical assaults on people, domestic disputes, all kinds of stuff, professional athletes, and still never had to do stuff like this. Nothing even close. They just got re-signed. Miles Bridges, he just pled no contest and uh, took a plea deal, probably worked it out, is going to have to pay probably a couple million dollars to make it go away. Very likely that's what's going to happen, right? And guess what? He will probably get a job and nothing will have to happen. He did something physical that actually was severe and very serious and really hurt somebody. You know, your feelings getting hurt doesn't mean you're right. But somebody physically harming you (laughs) is, is something completely different. Ime Adoku, who the Brooklyn Nets want to bring on as their head coach. Is he going to have this list? Is Ime Adoku going to have to have to do and complete six things to be the head coach? Or is he just going to get to come in and be a head coach when he was accused of sexual harassment? I'm not talking about just the, the, the relationship, which that is wrong in and of itself. You know, he broke rules. He knew the consequences. He knew his actions. You know, I see a lot of people try to defend that. They're like, everybody cheats. Oh, okay, so that means it's right. So if everybody stole, what? You're not a thief? Like, no, he, he, it's, it, that's a morality thing. He still violated rules that he knew, right? He actually did an action. He, he ruined and affected somebody's marriage that was with the organization. That's how this whole story broke out was because the husband overheard them and this whole thing unsued, right? Like that actually caused harm, not just feelings, actual harm, not to mention the harassment that he was being accused of amongst other women. And again, that is actual actions. And he's going to get to what? Come in as the Brooklyn Nets head coach and everything's fine? What about Joe Sy and all his stuff? People are literally dying. Those are actions. He is taking actions or lack thereof. How come Joe Sy gets to be an owner? How come Joe Sy gets to gets to condemn Kyrie Irving when he's doing stuff that is, I mean, genocide. It's disgusting, allegedly. It's just, but... He's never had to be held to any standard because the market he represents, it's media, it's money, it's backing, you know, like it just, this seemed like a witch hunt. If I, if Kyrie did something wrong, my tune would be completely different. I I mean, seriously wrong like this. Okay. He did something wrong, but not to this level, you know, not to this degree that they are making this out to be like if Kyrie called to action. You know, hey, everybody, I need everyone on this date at this time to grab your pitchforks and we're going down over here. Then, okay, I could understand that. Let's, you know, hey, go ahead. Media, do your thing. But that's not what happened here. If Kyrie, you know, went to a a synagogue or something and did something, you know, just disturbing. Okay, that's fine. I can understand that. But there are... There are levels to things. You know, there, there's different degrees to things. 
You know, when, at what point does the, the punishment not fit the crime? You know, what time, what, at what point does it get too extreme, get too much, too heavy? It just, this seems like something that just became a witch hunt. You know, like, I believe in right and wrong. I'm not, my art, my whole thing isn't that he didn't do anything wrong. A lot of people in the videos that I've made that I've talked about this stuff, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're okay with what he did, blah, blah, blah. I've never once said that. Never once said anything. I've said I'm not educated enough to know that information because I'm not. I, I've never watched the book. I've, I've never read the book. I've never watched the movie. Why would I talk about something I don't? Just like I said, if you don't understand the context of something, why would you why would you assume the context? I don't know if that is good or bad. I've heard that there are stuff you know, uh, that is in there that's bad, but I haven't read it and I'm not just going to be- assume that I know because other people told me that that's what it is that my my whole issue isn't whether what he did was right or wrong if he did he did something wrong okay he did something wrong but the punishment has to fit the crime what happened to free speech what happened to free expression what happened to free belief systems and stuff like that like this doesn't seem to be about Kyrie Irving I mean, how do you lis- listen to those six things or whatever it is that they want Kyrie Irving to do and you look at that and go, yep, that's about Kyrie Irving. None of that is about Kyrie Irving. That's about the Brooklyn Nets. He apologized and this still hasn't gone away because it was never about the apology. The apology never mattered, which is why from the very beginning I said Kyrie should not apologize and should tell everybody to go fuck themselves because... It's every time you see something like this happen, whether it's warranted or not, the apology never matters. Nobody ever cares about the apology, which is why you should just just tell everyone to go fuck themselves. You know, like it's it's insane. Nobody's perfect. I have done and said shit in my life that, you know, I regret that I'm disappointed in myself in that, you know, wasn't wasn't right. Everybody has. There is not a single person on this planet that hasn't said or done something that hurt or offended or, you know, was just the wrong thing, uh, whether we realized it or not. You know, we've all done stuff that we knew was bad or that we knew we shouldn't have done and we did it anyway because it's just what you do. You know, it's we're, we're all flawed creatures. You know, this isn't this is nothing more than just Kyrie Irving being accused of something and them taking this to a, a level that is just it's insane. This seems more about let's let's get this man subdued so he doesn't do something again that we don't like. Again, everything is about how, oh, well, the Brooklyn Nets need to see fit. Well, what is fit to you? Outline that to us. What is your definition? If Kyrie posts about Starbucks and a Frappuccino and you as the Brooklyn Nets owner, you know, whatever, he, he doesn't like that type of Frappuccinos. Now is he, is that something that... He shouldn't have done it. Kyrie should just what? Get off of social media? Should just never have a voice, never talk, never say anything? What is it? I don't know. It's just, it's disturbing to me. It really is. It's, it's, this has become something more than just basketball and more than just uh, a fuck up. Kyrie fucked up? Okay, fine. But this has become something completely different, which is why I've, I'm talking so heavily about this. Why? I'm expressing so much about this because all the other narratives, all the other conversations, everything else you see is all the same thing. Nobody is talking about Joe Sai and Ime Adoku and making those connections and saying, okay, well, what is fair here? Wait a minute. Hold on. Time out. If we're going to say that this is condemnable, well, to what degree is this? Is sexual harassment okay? Is that something that is fit amongst the organization? Is, you know, genocide and death and destruction fit for the Brooklyn Nets organization? Is that something that is okay? Where are we? What is it? What, 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 what is, where's, where's your line? How come nobody else is talking about that? Other than some random YouTuber on, on YouTube that is a nobody. I'm not a reporter. I'm not some insider. I, I'm some dude on YouTube that makes videos for fun. And this has just become something that is completely mind-blowing to me. 
but it's basketball related. So that's why I want to talk about it because it's something that needs to be talked about, something that needs to be addressed. And I, a YouTuber with 5,000 subscribers should not be the only one talking about this. It just shouldn't be. 